Hey everybody, Tom here, and today I want to help you set up uh, the box so that you can prepare to set up your first scenario of Seventh Continent. Now, I did a video of this that is also available, I'll put a link to it in the description of this video, uh, where I do the same thing I'm about to do, but in a much longer style. Uh, the way that I did it in the longer video is that everything was packaged, everything was wrapped, I had no clue what I was about to see as I opened up the box, and so that video, which ended up being a lot longer than I intended it to be, um, shows me physically opening every package, showing you where I'm sorting everything out, and things like that. Um, I, truth be told, wasn't super happy about that video, uh, just because it turned out to be longer than I think it will be useful. And so what I've done is I'm going to make an express episode of that video where I'm just going to walk you through what you need to know and what you need to do to prepare for your very first game of the Seventh Continent. So with that in mind, let me just go ahead and open this up and pray that this video is shorter. <laughs> and Cool, go ahead and put this over here. Now, in the game of Seventh Continent, like I said, everything that I've got in the box has already been unwrapped, but I just want to kind of show you the most important things you need to know about organizing the box to maximize the fun of the gameplay. So, of course, we've got our rule book. You're going to want to keep that close by because you're going to have questions come through. Now, in the box, when you first open it up, there's going to be a punch board with these four pieces um, in it. And what you're going to want to do probably is to build this box if you want to have kind of a nice elevated discard pile available for you. Now something I didn't know when I was first unboxing the game is that this discard pile thing is double-sided and it's not just double-sided to look pretty but it has two different purposes. If you're first setting up the game I think that by reading this as happened to me uh, and trying to decide which one to choose is going to be overwhelming but essentially it says you need to choose a side before you begin and it looks to me like these are different ways to handle if you see a grave site in the game I'm gonna guess that you won't see a grave site for a while so don't stress just pick one of these sides and then what you need to do is you need to build this holder if you want to if this is something you want to use it is definitely not required they have other systems for managing your discard pile but the way you're gonna build this is you're just gonna slide this piece here I liked to keep this side out because I just thought it looked cooler but I suppose of course you could put that side in like that. Oh, maybe that is the way it's supposed to go. I don't know. I don't think so. But for me, I did it like this. Put that on the outside. Same with this side over here. Okay. And then you're going to take this bottom tray and it just slides in like this. Now, for me, I did assemble this the first time, uh, but I hate assembling and disassembling. So I just found some shelf space. I thought this looked cool on a shelf and I've been keeping it on a shelf in the meantime. <laughs> in fact, when playing my gameplay videos, I am not even using these on the camera because I shoot overhead like this and I thought that this looked kind of dumb. So I have essentially removed this from the game. But here it is and that's going to be in the game. Just be aware that you're going to want to pick a side and build it or don't build it. Do whatever you want. It's in there. Now some other things that you're going to find are you're going to have four player aids which are double sided and they're great and just be aware there might be some warping. I've noticed mine warping a little bit um, but it has been a little bit of weird weather here in Utah in the last week so just a heads up about that. And some other things you're going to want to have is you're going to want to have some kind of a storage solution for some stuff. Um, so there are three things, kind of four, that come in the game and I think these came in this little baggie. So these are little stands for your cardboard character holders. And I, like I said, I think these ones came in a resealable bag. But I believe that the dice that come with the game actually came in a bag that doesn't reseal. So you're going to want to have some way to store these dice. The other thing that you're going to want to have is a place to put all of the cardboard tokens. These are different characters. Now, something that also kind of confused me a little bit is inside of here, there are three different kinds of tokens I want to point out. There are round characters, there are matching full body characters, and there are also fire things here. Now, I imagine you could choose to use either one of these when playing the game on the map. Um, but what the book says is that these round tokens are more for random character picking. And so you can have these round characters if you're not sure which character you want to play. You can use these to just randomly pick one. And then you would just find your matching character. And then also when you play, every player gets one fire token. And the rest of the things really aren't used all that often. So you're just going to want to have some storage solution for these guys here. Now, um, 
these are simple enough and you don't use them often enough that really having baggies is probably a great idea. But for me, I'm a Plano box obsession, obsessionado. <laughs> is that a new term? Probably. And I like to keep things in a Plano box just so I don't have to like fumble around with baggies. And so I found this Plano box at Walmart. I think these are $2, maybe a little bit less. Um, and they are just in the tackle box section in the fishing section and this has five dividers and this is excessive you do not need this much space for the base game but I also know that there's a lot of expansions coming when I might want to utilize this space here and so what I've done is let me pull this out there are also every one of these cardboard tokens also has except for the round ones has a matching plastic token and so there's kind of this nice divider that goes right in here. So it's totally fine if you want to use it. That's great. It keeps things separated. It keeps things nice. Uh, but these are super teeny tiny. And you can see here we've got our seven characters and we have our fire starters over here. So for me, what I've done is because I wanted to utilize this box until the time that I get the expansions is I have just taken out all of the plastic pieces and I'm putting them in one of these storage compartments just in case I care about them so that I don't have to fumble with this other plastic item all that often. And again, this is totally not mandatory. Obviously, none of this is mandatory, but it's just something that for me made things seem a little bit easier. And then just to keep the spacer, I just plopped that back down in there. And then, so that I wouldn't have to fumble with the bags, because I kind of hate opening bags all the time, I just decided to dump these. I think I, I'm going to put them in this spot over here. Okay. And then, I also decided to take my plastic, or not my plastic, my cardboard tokens. And more or less what I've done is I've sorted them uh, into characters and fires over here. So I've got the plastic versions and the cardboard versions. And honestly, probably one of these days, I'm just going to merge them into the same one, or I'm just going to put the plastic ones back in to have more space. And then I've put the round ones over here because if I want to randomly generate, I don't want to have to separate them from over there. So I put the round ones here, I put these ones here, and then I added the dice into, you could obviously put it in the empty space, um, but what I've done is I've just put the dice into this section, and that way, when I'm playing the game, things that I've saved, I don't resort them back in here. Anything that I'm currently using for a current game, I store them in here between sessions. So I just keep that one open and available. And then this Plano box fits perfectly right there. And everything like your, your player aids and your rule book fit nicely on top of that. So it's not anything scary or big. It's not dramatic. It's just a nice way to say, hey, I'm ready to play the game. Pop that open. Okay, there's that. Now, let's get to the most important part of the game, which is organizing the cards. Inside of this box, you're gonna, when you first get it, you're gonna see a bunch of foam um, blocks. My recommendation is do not, under any circumstance, throw these away. You are gonna wanna have these to kind of separate your cards and to hold them into place. I know it doesn't look like that's how I'm using them right now, um, but we'll talk about that in just a second. So just save these just to be safe in case uh, you need them. Um, there's an entire empty tray here, and like I said, that's because there are a lot of cards and expansions on the way, and so I know that these cards that are nicely fitting into the other two boxes are going to expand, and I'm gonna need space in here. And to keep cards from tipping over, I'm keeping these foam blocks so that way, you know, when I get some expansions, I could put them here. When I get more expansions, they can fill up that space. So that's what these are for. Let me just remove these. And when you get the game, the way that they're organized, and you can, again, see this in my longer video if you want to put up with my babbling, is you're going to get uh, tons of cards. You're going to get packages and packages of cards. The nice thing is they did such a great job of keeping those cards organized, which where this game is so much organization is important. And so let me just tell you how I've organized the game. The heart of the game is going to come from these green um, adventure tiles or terrain tiles. I think they call them adventure. And by tiles, I mean card. They are just these square cards. They all have a number and they have a front and a back. Okay, so on the back side, they are either going to be green or they're going to be yellow. In the case that there are multiple green cards or multiple yellow cards of the same number, you're going to want to, well, you don't have to shuffle them up, but they're essentially going to be randomized. So when you open up your packs of cards, if you really wanted to spend the time to go through all 500 cards, 
at least. I think there's more than that, probably closer to a thousand. If you want to spend time shuffling, that's great. What I usually do is I just randomly pick them out. So like I said, the cards are already in numerical order. I literally just open them up, put them into the trays, and then along with all of the cards that you're going to see is there are a bunch of dividers. So you're going to see dividers here of different numbers. So you're going to have a zero divider, a four divider, 50, 51, 100. And for the most part, they're in increments of 50 with a couple exceptions. You have four and you have 109. Other than that, they are in these 50s. My best understanding, at first I thought that there was a lot of cards numbered four and 109, but I think it's that there's a lot of cards numbered three and 108, I think. Don't quote me on this. Of course, this is an exploration game and I have really tried to avoid spoilers. But the box recommends that you put the dividers in front of the number. So for example, here's the four divider. I have the card numbered four right behind it. Uh, most of my babbling in the longer video is me debating and deciding if I was really putting the dividers in front of or behind of things, and I came to a compromise. For the green dividers, I've put the dividers in front of their matching number. So I know that 50 is behind there, 51 is here. Uh, and you could see that there is a lot of cards numbered 50 for whatever reason, which is why, oh yeah, there's that other random number, the number 51 here. So my recommendation, at least for the green cards, is make sure you put the numbers probably behind the divider they belong to. So that's what this part is here, and also all of these here. Next, um, what we've got are some other cards that are important. You're going to get a pack of cards that is exploration cards, and you're going to be able to tell those cards because of the foggy looking thing here, and they're all going to be having different numbers. So this set right here all has the Roman numeral 1. So you're going to want to keep the ones together, and as soon as you open that pack, separate out the ones, and you're going to want to have these shuffled. Or if you don't want to shuffle them, just make sure that you're grabbing from them randomly. And then, because I'm a freaking weirdo, I have decided to put these in front of the divider. Because for me, <laughs> if I see a divider with the number one, I know, for my organization style, that those cards go in front. Maybe you want to be completely consistent, as most people probably will be, and they would put the ones behind the divider wherever you want. I don't care, obviously. But you just want to make sure that you're organized in a way that if you need to pull out a one exploration card, you know exactly where to find that. So you're going to see a bunch of ones, tons of twos, you got a lot of threes and fours, a couple fives, uh, six, seven, eight, and there is a divider for tens, um, but there are no ten cards that I noticed uh, for exploration. So what you're seeing here, uh, if you wanted to watch that video, is I've got, it's in my Crystal Song setup video, these are some printed versions um, for an expansion coming out, I just printed it off the website. There was no divider for them, so I'm just kind of occupying the ten space uh, for those at the moment. All right, so these are the main things that you've got to make sure you get separated and sorted and all of those things. Now a couple of other things to be aware of are you're going to have some dividers, a divider called the past. That mostly won't be in use until you're playing the game, so you're just going to hold on to that and be aware that it does tell you that you may uh, lay this divider out to use during the game, and I actually do. So if you watch my gameplay videos, you're going to see that I pull this divider out on the table, and when I'm discarding some cards, I put them right on that divider. You're also going to find a magnifying glass that is a square shape that fits nicely here. Some cards are going to need to be magnified if you want to look for things or if your eyes are bad or anything like that. So you're going to have that. And the other thing that I probably should have pointed out at the beginning of this video, don't hate me, is I had no idea this was in the box until it was too late. Um, but they have a great divider here called Preparation and Storage. Well, they will talk you through all of the stuff that I'm talking to you about here. So it just tells you, hey, put these numbers here, put these numbers here, and all of those things. And I've kind of been using this as its own divider to hold um, these dice cards. You're going to have a whole bunch of dice cards. And also, you're going to have your cursors. We'll talk about those in a second. But these dice cards just help you save the game. They have one, two, three, and four on this side, five and six on that side. So that's their purpose. You're just going to want to have these somewhere. Uh, most people probably would put this in the save spot until you have to save the game, in which case you decide where to put them. Okay? <clears throat> in the game, you're also going to have a bunch of purple cards. Now, I've already started a game, so let me, let me grab an example here. 
you're going to have four blank regular curse cards. All right. And so these are going to be in a stack and probably put that. I think I had them with preparation and storage. But as soon as you start your first game, you're going to be pulling these cards out and they're going to become part of the game. So that's why they're currently out. Uh, let me put that back. Okay. You're also going to have some helpers. Well, here, let's talk about the curse cards. Now, for every story in the game, you're going to find, I think, two curse cards. You're going to find a curse card that looks like this, and you're going to find a clue card. So what I've done is I've just matched them up. These are the Voracious Goddess cards. So if I'm going to play that curse, I've got a curse card and a clue card. And then you have the Bloody Hunt and the Bloody Hunt clue. The, the uh, what is that? An Offering to the Guardian's Curse, an Offering to the Guardian's Clue. And then you've got uh, the Dark Chest of the Damned and the Dark Chest of the Damned clue. So I have just decided to keep these all together. And again, you could probably just put that in front of the Preparation and Storage Divider. That's where I've decided to keep mine. Let me go ahead and put these back in here. All right, so now we've talked about curse cards. Now there's something else you've got to watch out for is that there are going to be three different kinds of blue cards. And this was a little bit confusing for me. Now these blue cards all look identical on the back. And there are three dividers for them. There's regular skills, there's advanced skills, and there are, oh, can you see that? Sorry, let me pull that closer. Regular skills, advanced skills, and character specific skills. And here's how you can tell the difference. <clears throat> In the character specific skills, um, I'll also point out you're going to get different character cards. I have decided to put each character card with their character specific skills. So this one does not have the blue back. This is just this character right here. But all of these cards do have a blue back. So the way that I'm sorting out my characters, when you choose a character, I want it to be really easy to find. So I have the character specific card, it will have a red hand with it, and for me, I just put it in front of the five character specific skill cards with the blue back. And so you just kind of look through here, you can see there's that character card and his five skill cards. There's that character card and his five skill cards, and so on. And so when you're going to start a new scenario and you're picking characters, it's really easy to say, oh, okay, cool, I'm going to be playing Dimitri. And so you just go ahead and grab Dimitri's cards, and that's going to be really easy to find. So again, the character-specific blue cards are going to be hard to see. If you're just looking at the backs, there's nothing to tell them apart. You kind of got to browse through the fronts, and they're going to have those character faces um, on the front, just like that. Okay? So I, go, I just have gone ahead and put these guys, and I'm putting them face up so they're easy to find for when I start a new scenario. Now, the advanced skills and the regular skills are a little trickier. Again, in the packages, they're sorted. You don't have to sort them out, you know, one at a time. Uh, but let's take a look at how they're different. Identical on the back, but on the front side, a basic skill card just has this blue hand with this compass-looking thing, and that's the end of it. But an advanced skill card is going to have the blue hand, and they're going to have this numbered laurel wreath underneath it. And so you're going to want to keep this nearby, uh, and I just put them in here, and I don't know if I should have or not, but I did go ahead and I shuffled uh, each of these decks. Definitely you're going to want to shuffle the regular skill cards, and I'm pretty sure that you want to uh, shuffle the advanced skill cards. So again, just to emphasize, skill cards, the regular ones without the laurel wreath, those get shuffled. Uh, the character specific cards, sort them by their character faces, and the advanced skill cards I don't know. The, the rule book has not told me what to do with it. I haven't seen anything. I've been avoiding things online. I know that these will come up at some point. Uh, like I think the way the rule book says is that you buy these with experience points, which is great. Um, but I don't know if it would be wisest to sort these by alphabetical order or by cost. I have no clue how these are going to come into the game. Uh, but you don't need to shuffle these. So you can just go ahead and put them in there until the game tells you what to do with them. But that's it. Um, I Again, because I had already started playing, I had already pulled these cards out, but these could also come here in the storage solution. No big deal. Okay, so for my game, I'm pulling these back out. But that's it. That's what you got, and that will get you your cards organized. Uh, one more thing to be aware of is you're going to have a lot of, well, not a lot, but you're going to have a couple extra dividers that you don't need. Um, that is because those are for expansion cards. And you're also going to have a divider back here called banished cards. Throughout the game, you're going to be told to banish certain items, and those cards are out of the game until you lose or win the scenario. And so you're just going to want to keep that by that that um, divider back there. And um, I've been putting my banished cards behind that. 
So there you go. Once you get all of your cards sorted, you can just pull back your base box. And of course, if you're only getting the base box, I think you actually have a reasonable um, use of this tray, which is to put these cards in one of the trays, and then stick one of your foam blocks behind it, and then maybe put the beginning or the ending of your numbers in another tray, put the foam box uh, blocks to keep it there. But for me, I've just decided to keep all of the cards for the base game in these two trays. They fit so nicely. And then I've got these foam, um, this foam here. Oh, and also there's a, a cardboard divider down here at the bottom just to keep things from shifting around too much. So slide that in there. I'm keeping, for me, I'm keeping that plastic piece there. And then I've got my Plano tray and we've got our action cards. And finally, we've got this. And as I said, you could dismantle this, put it back in the box, or you could just keep it as is and call that good. We'll go ahead and put the game on, or the box, <laughs> what? That is called a lid. Put the lid on it, and now you're ready to begin your first scenario of um, the seventh continent. This video was not quite as short as I wanted it to be, but again, hopefully it was shorter and more informative for you. I appreciate you watching. If you would like to learn how to set up your first scenario, I'll put the link for that video in the description of this video. I'll talk you through how to set up the scenario, The Crystal's Song which has been recommended by the creators of the game as a shorter, good introductory scenario. It's print and play. I discussed that in the video. And then if you want to learn how to play the game, I'll put a link to that in this description as well. Um, in my third video of this series, I teach you how to play the game while I'm playing the game. I keep the video pretty short, so there will be spoilers, but I try to keep them minimal if you want to learn how to play the game through watching my video. Um, and especially with using the curse that I use, there are ways to not be spoiled. You could pick a different starting tile. But again, you'll learn more about that in this setup video. So thank you guys for watching this. I appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them for me down below. I am pretty good at responding quickly. So just let me know if you have anything that I can do for you. And good luck on your journey to the seventh continent. I'll see you guys later. Bye.